Doug McConey vlog. I'm back at Del Mar Boulevard, the so-called racial dividing line in St. Louis, Missouri. And about a month ago, I did a video called We Can Do Better after George Floyd's unnecessary death and Breonna Taylor's and Michael Brown's and so many other innocent black lives that have been lost to reflect on what we can do better to help fight for racial justice in our communities and in our workplaces. And I heard from a number of you, some videos, some DMs, some emails. Thank you for your submissions and feedback. So Kevin, what are you gonna do about it? Let's keep fighting. That's what I have to do. And you know, master all the strength that I have and talking to people, uh, getting courage from others and just keep fighting. That, that, that's all I can do. Kevin, we are here to fight with you. And I started this journey by having a conversation. If you haven't seen the Cross Border Tax Talks podcast, where I sit down with my black international tax partner, Stephen Moshe, for him to describe what his experience is like as a black professional in corporate America, check that out. But the conversation doesn't end there. I commit to continuing to have conversations, both in my work and private lives, to make sure that I understand and can empathize with underrepresented minorities. Hi, Doug. One thing I want to commit myself to as an Asian American during this time is to stand with the black community in solidarity. This to me means showing up, engaging in conversations, listening, and taking it upon myself to learn about the history of Asian Americans in this country and our role in anti-blackness. Hopefully, this will help me recognize injustices when they occur and help me to continue to stand up and with the black community. Diane, thanks for your perspective as an Asian American woman. I think it's important for each of us to reflect on our own cultural backgrounds, to understand how we fit in as part of the larger puzzle and what we can do as individuals. A commitment that I've made is to continue to read and learn and study about not just the plight of our black Americans, but understanding the context that I have as a white man of privilege and what I can do individually to help be an advocate for my black brothers and sisters in the community and in my workplace. Hey Doug, I commit to read and to watch uh, stories and movies by black writers and producers and about the black experience in America. Although I no longer live there, I share St. Louis as a hometown with you, Doug, and I cannot recommend the book The Broken Heart of America highly enough. Buying. I commit to using my purchasing power to buy from fair trade and Black-owned businesses. And last, intervening. I commit to being a first intervener when I observe racism, whether it's overt or covert and I'm practicing my interventions ahead of time, so I'm not caught off guard. It's not just enough to acknowledge there's a problem. We, as white Americans, need to be partners. We need to be advocates. We need to be sponsors, both in our communities and in the workplace. I have made a commitment on my team to grow and develop networking amongst our black professionals. I have made a commitment to mentor and sponsor black individuals and other underrepresented minorities to help make sure that they have the same opportunities that everyone else in our group does. And importantly, as a business leader, I'm going to hold my teams and myself accountable to make sure that underrepresented minorities get the opportunities that they deserve to become successful professionals in my world. Doug, I've been spending time educating, confronting, and acting. Educating by reading, watching, and discussing social injustice with family, friends, and colleagues. I have two first-time voters in my family, so we spend a lot of time talking about the history of racism, and especially disenfranchisement, which unfortunately is an ever-increasing issue. Confronting the obvious 
racism and privilege from my past, but also the perhaps not so obvious racism that I still perpetuate and the privilege that I still benefit from. And acting by taking actions that don't just make me feel good, but that have a lasting impact. You know, one of the easiest actions we can all take is to vote. So not only will we vote, but we'll actively encourage others to vote. Doug, this is just the beginning of a very long journey, a long, necessary, and never-ending journey that we all need to take. Everyone, please vote on November 3rd. Make an impact. I usually ask the audience to like and subscribe for my videos on YouTube and LinkedIn, but I have a different request for this vlog. Continue those conversations with the underrepresented minorities and black professionals in your workplace to understand their plight and to understand what you can do individually. Take action. Be a sponsor. Be an advocate. My last request, and certainly not least, is best said by Brennan Marshall. Brennan? I'm committed to getting out the vote.